Hello Year 10. This lesson looks specifically at cones. Like with pyramids, these are solids which come to a point, but with a base shape that is a circle, so they are related to cylinders. You can see here we've got a base of a circle with a radius R, height of H, and then there's this sloping side represented by the letter L, which we will come to later. So remembering the general formula for the volume of a pyramid is one third of the base area times the height. In our case, the base area is a circle, so one third of pi r squared, the area of a circle, times by the height h. And there's a very specific formula for the volume of a cone. So very easy to use. So find the volume of this cone, v is equal to one third pi r squared h, one third times by pi times by four squared times by seven. So 16 times by seven is 112. So it's one third times by 112 pi. Put that into your calculator and round it and you get 117.3 cubic centimeters to one decimal place because it's a volume. So a nice and easy formula to use. Moving on to the surface area, it's a little less, less easy to use. So opening our cone out into its net just like we did with pyramids, and you'll see this shape, which is a sector, where theta is the angle in the middle of the sector, and the sloping side L here becomes the radius of the sector. So, the arc length of this sector is the same as the circumference of my cone. Imagine putting this back together and all that there becomes this part here. So the arc length of the sector is the same as the circumference, the circumference of the base of the cone. And the area of the sector becomes the curved surface area of the cone. So putting this all together will help us find a formula for the curved surface area in terms of pi, r and l only, which is what we need. So, the arc length here is going to be theta over 360 times by 2 times pi times the radius l times by 2, times by pi, times by L. The circumference of the base in this cone is circumference is equal to 2 pi R. We know those two things are equal. And so we get 2 pi r is equal to theta over 360 times by 2 pi times by l. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi and I get an expression for the radius r. Theta over 360 times by l. It's worth remembering that one. It's sometimes quite useful. Now, the area of the sector is equal to theta over 360 times by pi times by the radius of the sector squared. I'm just going to tinker with this a little bit. So theta over 360 times by, I know that's L times L, so I'm going to write one of the L's there, times by pi times by L. And the reason being that 
is exactly the same as our expression for R. So I'm going to replace that with R and I end up with R times by pi times by L. We know the area of the sector is the same as the curved surface area of the cone. So that means then we have a formula, the curved surface area. And that's going to be equal to, written in its normal form, pi r l. Now that's just the curved part. It's just this face round here. If I wanted the total surface area, then that would be the curved part and its circular base. So the curved part plus the circular base, which is pi r l, and the circular base is simply pi r squared. And you can see we have got two formula here, curved surface area is pi r l, and the total surface area is pi r l plus pi r squared in terms of pi r and l only, which is what we set out to do. Now, the good news is the formula for the volume of a cone and the formula for the curved surface area of a cone will always be given to you in exams. This one, unfortunately, isn't. So, which is why I said it's worth remembering. Moving on then to example two. So this sector is folded to form a cone. So you can see here, I have got the net of the curved part of a cone. I need to find the radius, the curved surface area, the total surface area and the vertical height. So if I actually folded it up, I would see a cone that looks like this. At the moment, that's just R, but that L is the sloping side, so that is 6. And that's H. So that's all I know at the moment. I want to find the radius. As I said, it's worth remembering that formula. R is equal to theta over 360 times by L. If you can't remember it, you have to go back to the first principles there and put the arc length and the circumference equal to each other. But if you can remember it, it's quicker. So my radius is going to be equal to 300 over 360 times by 6, which is, that cancels down to 5, 6 times by 6, which means that R is equal to 5 centimetres. The curved surface area Again, using my formula, pi r l. Now I know what r is. Stead straightforward. Pi times by 5 times by 6 is 30 pi. Put that into your calculator because we need answers to one decimal place. And that is 94.2 square centimetres. Part C. The total surface area is going to be equal to the curved surface area plus the base, which is a circle. I know what that is, I've just worked it out. And this is going to be pi times by the radius squared, which is 5 squared, which gives me 30 pi plus 25 pi, which simplifies to 55 pi. In your calculator, that gives me 172.8 square centimetres to one decimal place. 
and then the last part the vertical height so go back to this I now know that that is 5 and that is 6 which means we are back to looking and using Pythagoras' theorem so taking that triangle out there where that's H and that's my radius which is 5 and that's the slopey side which is 6 I have that right angle triangle so h squared plus 5 squared is equal to 6 squared h squared plus 25 is equal to 36 h squared is equal to 11 and h then is equal to the square root of 11 which is 3.3 centimeters to one decimal place. Now it's your turn. So please have a go at some of the questions in 15.3 S2, which you will find on page 313 of your Caboodle book.